Today we are doing a dorsal rhinotomy in a dog that has some kind of lesion in its nose and, sorry, I'm, I'm live streaming right now. Can you find me a Sumax? Sumax drill. Um, and uh, so we're doing a rhinotomy. So what happened was this dog had a biopsy of nasal lesions on CT and uh, the biopsy came back lymphocytic plasmacytic rhinitis. But when you look at the CT scan, you can see bone destruction, turbinate destruction, all kinds of stuff. So um, it is very, very unlikely to be just lymphocytic plasmacytic rhinitis. And so we're doing a nasal exoneration, um, both therapeutic and diagnostically. So. Um, It'll be helpful therapeutically if it's fungal because if you get rid of the majority of the fungal plaques and that kind of thing, um, that can help with medical treatment later on. And if it's neoplastic, then um, the exoneration is helpful because then we'll follow up with radiation therapy. And when you do the combination radiation therapy and nasal exoneration, you get a median survival time of about two years. Um, so that's pretty good. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so that you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. So you can see here two spots where we've got perforation of the nasal bone. And again, that is very, very unlikely to happen with a um, lymphocytic plasmacytic rhinitis. Did you end up getting me an electric birth? Great, thank you. So I'm just taking away the soft tissue. May I have the other pieces that are on the Yep. And? And? Yep, thank you. So turn on the core unit, please. Just getting our drill set up. Had a big weekend this weekend with neuro cases and stuff, and then also happened to have our main central supply person on annual leave. So, um, it's been difficult to keep up with all of the surgical instruments. Can you get me a, burr, a, a number five, or a five mil Sumex burr, please? So that's over the frontal sinus there. So do we have that five mil burr? Thank you. So we'll just get some saline, please. So I'm just going to burr away. Some of this bone. Do a trip, trip, trip. Better drop a second, please. Sorry. Drop a second, please. Okay. 
And we did a coag profile on this dog uh, today and found that it was normal. Can I get a Yankara tip, please? Look at that. Oh. Oh my God. And these can bleed a lot. And so we're just aware of um, that as a possibility. Try to remove as much of the bone as I can before I start really getting into the part that's going to bleed. Once it starts bleeding, it's not going to stop. Can you suction down there, please, for me? It's not going to stop until we get everything out. Into the frontal sinus there. So if you do a biopsy, yeah, I think if this has been biopsied twice. If you do two unsuccessful biopsies, or even one, and you and you're still non-diagnostic, it's worth going in and just doing the exoneration. Find out what's going on. It looks like in the frontal sinus, there's not a lot of soft tissue. It's just um, boogers. Keep some pressure down at the bottom there. Yep. Just get that down uh, under your hands. Yep. Can I get a, cur a curette, a large curette? Mm -hmm. And the frontal sinus rarely bleeds very much, so I usually go over that, go after that first. Now this is the connection with the nasal cavity here. Bigger. Thank you. So I'm just breaking through into the nasal cavity there.
Now we're getting into something that looks more like tumor to me, this stuff in here. So we just need to start collecting some of this for a histopath. And just get a bunch of that over there. basically getting into the part that we can't really get the bleeding to stop until we get all of the soft tissue out of the nose. And so we're monitoring our blood loss. Um, by weighing the suction bucket. I'm just keeping track of what's going into the bucket. I have had one dog bleed to death during this procedure, but it had bled quite extensively before we even got into surgery. And so it would have used up all of its clotting factors. Basically, we have to just be really aggressive and get everything out as quickly as we can. And only once we've gotten everything out will the bleeding stop. questions, I can't see the screen, but I'm not going to stop to answer them right now, because we're in the critical part of the procedure. Bradycardic, tachycardic, so I give him a fluid bolus of about 500 mils per. Do you have a blood pressure on him? How much blood we have in the bucket, please? How much blood we've got in the bucket, please?
I beg your pardon? Sorry. About 300 mils. Okay. this off now for a little while. It's total blood volume on the dog. How much does it weigh? 16 mils. So it's about probably 1400 mils. So we've lost a quarter of its blood volume already, 25%. Um, so how much fluid did we put in some? Quite a bit of fluid when we were burning or drilling, or not too much? No, not too much, no. Okay. Uh, so we'll just do a five minute count, please. Can you give me a five minute count? So we'll just give this about five minutes. I can come over and have a look at the screen. Um, so we don't use any drugs yet to prevent bleeding. We might consider using some um, uh, transoxanic acid. Um, we'll consider that postoperatively. So. There was a little bit of salt hard palate involvement in CT. We're doing a nasal exoneration for what's probably a nasal tumor. So now we're just waiting, giving five minutes for the blood to clot. Can I get some gel foam, please? So I can, now's a good time to answer any questions, if you have any. Hope everybody's having a good holiday season. Today is my last day for about two and a half weeks, um, but James will be here hopefully live streaming 
on some of the days when he's working. He tends to live stream Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So just waiting, waiting. How much time has it been? It's two minutes left. Two minutes left, okay. It is the longest five minutes of a surgeon's life. <laughs> Heart rate coming down a bit. So most common tumors for the nasal cavity would be uh, nasal carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, and sarcoma in the form of either chondrosarcoma. Um, occasionally you'll see a soft tissue sarcoma. You can also see squamous cell carcinomas. And the decision to go to surgery, um, so we take our tumors to surgery because we follow up with radiation therapy. If you just do surgery on these, it doesn't make any difference in survival. So you want to make sure that if you're just doing surgery that you follow up with radiation therapy or do radiation therapy alone. With the combination um, of surgery and radiation therapy, we get a median survival time of two years. Um, we do see subcutaneous emphysema post-operatively commonly. Um, this dog presented with um, nasal discharge, uh, sneezing, and blood. Uh, let me just see if I can see some of the other questions. This is a cattle or a little kelpie, kelpie, uh, border collie, border collie um, that's about 11 years old. And it's about 16 kilograms. Um, so worst case scenario would be a nasal carcinoma. And with surgery and radiation therapy, we get a median survival time of two years. Um, and these owners would be willing to proceed with radiation therapy. Um, and we've done two biopsies in the past. And they were non-diagnostic. They came back with lymphocytic plasmacytic rhinitis. Um, so that's why we've done the nasal exoneration. All right, so now we'll come out with our... Sponge. Try to come out slowly. So if there's bleeding, I can address it as we go instead of trying to work in a puddle of blood. There's a little bit of bleeding right there, so I'll just put a little piece of gel foam on it. There's a comment that they prefer surgeries with less blood. So do I. <laughs> Not my favorite surgery. So that's heaps better. In worst case scenario, we can leave sponges in overnight and come back in the next day. I'm sure I'd be unpopular with my co-workers if I did that because I'm leaving. So it's definitely slowed down to a dull roar. here and I'll go back and work rostrally.
we'll do another five minutes here. Can we get a five minute count, please? And we don't worry about replacing the bone when we go to close this. We'll come back and see if there are more questions. No, it doesn't look like it. So again, we're just waiting another five. Because we don't have anything to replace it with. <laughs> you could put in like titanium plates and stuff like that, but there's no there's no benefit to it. And often, if you put in bone replacements, they get infected. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can we give another fluid bolus, please? What do you want? Uh, what do you want? How much fluid bolus have you given? Okay, let's do 500 total, please. 500. Yeah, 500 mils total. So give another 340. Okay. Heart rates come up again and blood pressure's down, so. Uh, there's no issue um, with uh, fragility of the nose after all this heals. Um, and then we do five minute counts in order to allow the blood clot. So blood clotting takes about five minutes for the, um, uh, I think it's intrinsic pathway, well, including platelet activation, platelet aggregation, and then, and then uh, the blood clot to form to get a nice fibrinogen to fibrin seal. Um, we uh, give it generally what's thought is about five minutes. So we do um, a couple of those until we're comfortable, confident that the bleeding has slowed down enough. And is that going in, fluid bolus going in as a bolus, like full speed? Yeah. Okay. If we've lost 300, 350 mils, we can give as much as a liter of fluid. Yeah. Start with 500 and see how we're doing. Hello. Hey. How far off are you? Uh, probably 15. Have you looked at plates for your fracture? Uh, is my fracture next? Yeah. I haven't looked at the fracture yet, so I have no idea what it looks like. Can I knock it out inside a treatment anyway, or do you want to wait and see? Uh, you can probably knock it out. That's okay. fine. Yeah. I can take some 2 OPDS, please. Blood pressure is coming up a bit. Um, we don't stent nasal cavities um, for these. How long has it been? It's been three and a half. Can we start putting some of this in formalin, please? I'll just hand you a bunch of it. That's really different. Look at it's like jelly. Yeah, that's just boogers. Okay, that's, that's good. good. Thanks. That's good up there. It's often just below ventral to the cribriform plate that all the bleeding comes from.
time. Pretty good. <clears throat> and this is methyl cellulose, so it will resorb. Basically, we're just using the gel foam for tamponade. Almost getting to the point that I'm thinking about just closing this temporarily overnight because this is still not stopping. Especially these owners don't want a blood transfusion for religious purposes and so for that reason I think being conservative packing this off is appropriate So I'm just going to close this up now and we'll plan on going back in tomorrow um, and removing that packing. It's called the second look procedure. And they do it all the time in humans, but we as veterinarians are always reluctant not to try to accomplish everything in one surgery for whatever reason, financial or whatever. I commonly pack things off that are bleeding, come back in the next day. Rather do that than have this drip blood all night and then need a blood transfusion that the owners won't let us give. Run that suture for me, please.
other questions that I've missed? What's the question? Uh, we won't do a tracheostomy, don't need one. So it's a nasal cavity, so the dog's oral cavity and the other nostril are still intact, so there's no need for a tracheostomy. We'll just come back in tomorrow and remove the packing. I'm less concerned about cosmesis here because, can you hold on to that place for me? Because we're going back in tomorrow anyway, so. Kat, Kat will do a much nicer job than I've done. I'll leave this suture quite long. Can I get a sta skin stapler, please? Uh, so there is a question about whether tranexamic acid is appropriate here, and we will use that overnight. So post up on this guy. Is it on a FET CRI already, Petra? No. Okay, so we'll have it on meth. Um, we'll keep it sedated, so keep it on acepromazine. We will... Um, it can have anti-inflammatories. So meloxicam. No antibiotics. All right, so we'll just leave that. I'll go ahead and end the live stream. I'll just go back and make sure there aren't any other. Um, no, so the dog, will, we will let it wake up. Um, the margins don't matter because we're following up with radiation therapy. Uh, we will not try to remove the hard palate, so we're doing just a marginal excision and we're planning on following up with radiation therapy, so we don't need to. We won't put a drain in. Um, and that is pretty much it. So I'll go ahead and wrap it up and hopefully I've got some more things to live stream today. Thanks a lot for 